information or requests for audio files of previous shows, go to www.bobharden.com. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show. It's brought to you in part by the good folks at Johnson's Air Conditioning, Naples' longest established air conditioning company, as well as Golf Shore Playhouse, bringing you professional New York-style theater at its best. Visit golfshoreplayhouse.org. Coming up, we're going to visit with David Bolduc. Right now, we have with us Dr. Zudi Jasser. He is the founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He's also the author of a terrific book. If you really want to understand the situation in Islam, uh, it is The Battle for the Soul of Islam. Dr. Jasser. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Bob. It's always great to be with you. You know, I've seen uh, you on so, so many uh, media outlets recently in your discussions about uh, the, the Pope's visit. He's now left Philadelphia. I wanted to get your thoughts about uh, what he did and didn't talk about. Well, you know, I think any time uh, a, a leader of that stature and spirituality and of 1.2 billion Catholics in the world and you know, uh, brings with him just a, uh, a stature that's uh, humbling, and it was great to see him come to the United States. Um, but I can tell you, you know, as somebody who has been uh, trying to get our country, our world, if you will, and my own faith community to focus on the priorities at hand in the 21st century that threaten our security, that, you know, if you look at Pope Benedict before him, he gave a speech in 2006 that basically laid out that Islam, like the other world religions, should come to terms with reason, as uh, Pope Benedict mentioned, and uh, come to terms with modernity. And he didn't do that in a, you know, a, a negative way, but in a positive way of uh, the historical arc. And now to see uh, uh, Pope Francis come and, and uh, join the leader of the free world and speak to Congress and and not be a man who's shy to talk about politics, uh, uh, certainly got into the fray on climate change and immigration and other things. Uh, and, you know, to see him ignore this most important issue of our time where he, as a, a religious leader, could have uh, stepped away from the minutia of some of the issues in America and, and looked at some of the global issues that only the West and the free world could deal with was was very disappointing. And yet, you know, I wrote, we wrote a letter to the Pope, uh, and an open letter, um, basically saying, uh, you know, where where is your leadership to the religious communities? 1.2 billion Catholics could help lead 1.5 billion Muslims into learning from your example. Step away from the, you know, p- politics of faith and uh, um, getting into the domestic policies, but rather uh, emulate for us. Uh, that uh, men of men of religion, men and women of religion, can stay out of politics and separate church and state. And in Islam, that's what we need to do to defeat Islamism, which is the root cause of radical and political Islam. And I don't think once in his entire five- or six-day visit did he enter the issue of political Islam and Islamism. And, uh, you know, you may say, well, it's a small population of Muslims in America, but Yes, you know, to underestimate the role America has, as he did mention, the the he briefly mentioned some of the persecution of Christians uh, by, I think he referred to terrorism, but didn't refer to the ideologies. That uh, right. was very disappointing. Right. So, so what in a in a perfect world, the Pope leaving the United States, what message? Uh, you know, because you focused on the separation of mosque and state, uh, but what clear message would you have liked to have heard to, to be very satisfied with the Pope's visit in this regard? that the Arab awakening in 2011 has created vacuums in the Middle East, and that that vacuum has a common uh, problem, which is uh, the change in the 20th century from dictatorships and autocrats, and now the beginning of the end of theocracy, and that Muslims uh, can learn uh, from the the difficult uh, revolutions and deadly revolutions that Christendom went through, in the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th century, and that ultimately those uh, that uh, uh, conflict with modernity and, and evolution into modernity, uh, and the defeat of theocracy, uh, and the you know um, victory of reason 
uh, is something that we can learn from. And I, you know, I think he could have said that, and mm-hmm. unfortunately didn't lay out. And a common problem that we see happening with, if you want to even weigh into the Christian persecution from ISIS and all these other radical groups, uh, the, the solution to that is obviously not the conversion of 1.5 billion Muslims, but rather the defeat of political Islam. Mm-hmm. And he could so much have done that as he had an imam there that I don't know who the imam was that they had gotten to be with him and others. And there was an opportunity there, even though they were laying out the interfaith uh, um, importance. Uh, absolutely. And uh, that really is the the gorilla on the table that uh, the Pope did not confront and talk about. And I definitely agree with you. Also, uh, Dr. Ben Carson has been continued in the news, and he says, well, you know what, uh, what I... And, of course, the discussion is around having a, a Muslim as a president. And he had said that, I, you know, I would not want that unless, and now he's clarifying, that uh, he would uh, say that sh- he would say the U.S. Constitution actually trumps uh, Sharia law and he'd have to give up his belief in Sharia law. What are your thoughts? Boy, you know, this story won't go away. No. It was, uh, he continued to give CNN interviews, and then his manager ended up ending the interview uh, early, it seemed, from the background. Um, you know, and, and he reports that he's not, he's doubling down, he's not uh, changing his remarks. I think the qualifications he's giving does make it clear, obviously, that Islamists are not compatible with the Constitution and are a threat not only to the presidency, but to any security clearance and any, any uh, type of uh, trust from the American public. But Muslims certainly are not, and they should be leading this. And and our allies, and not to mention, I mean, Charles Krauthammer really laid it out in the Washington Post well a few days ago and said, you know, enough is enough. This is a this is a major misspeak by uh, Candidate Carson because you can't mix up Muslims with Islamists, and Muslims are the, anyone who practices the faith of Islam, and for a candidate to, to identify Islam as black and white incompatible is a faith test, and certainly there is a huge theopolitical movement that is a threat, and we need to be able to vet that, but we need to uh, continue to articulate that it's the theocrats within Islam that are the problem, and we can't just say, you know, uh, um, black and white, that all of Islam is the problem until Muslims prove it otherwise, because then you basically have that faith test that the Founding Fathers, by the way, who knew well what theocracy was and what the problem with theocracy was, so we can't say they didn't know that's what this country is all about. And yet, um, then uh, Dr. Carson still uh, is, is trying to um, double down when, in right. fact, I, I think he just needs to move on. So, you know, what I'm hearing, though, loud and clear, and of course I've read your book, which I v- highly recommend, again, The Battle for the Soul of Islam, I highly recommend the reading of the book because number one, it's number it's so personal. But number two, outlines the problems that we're discussing right here, and so so really, what this comes down to it is a battle within the religion of Islam, and uh, it, these issues have to have to be confronted. Absolutely, and that's America needs to take sides within the House of Islam. America, our security services uh, domestically and uh, our foreign policy needs to take sides on those who believe in liberty and those who openly and admittedly reject theocracy as a problem. If they're apologists, they don't believe there's an issue, or they apologize for jihad, the militant arm of the theocrats, uh, then uh, they are not our allies, but rather our enemies. And we need to make that distinction, and my book does that. And I hope uh, Dr. Carson and other candidates begin to surround themselves with Muslims who can teach them otherwise. Uh, Doctor, you're doing God's work. I genuinely appreciate your coming on the show today. I want to, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, I've forgotten the uh, website. AIFdemocracy.org. AIFdemocracy.org. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Thank you. Take care, Will. My pleasure. All right, coming up, uh, what a great interview and how articulate this man is. And uh, hopefully we can confront the true issue right now. I've never heard this president mention the word Islamic Jihad. He's a workplace violence. I mean, why this avoids, I have no idea. I think you know what I'm talking about. 